So now let's move on to question number two. So for question two, we are going to determine the tension developed in cables AB, AC, and then AD. Now for this question, we have four forces acting on this particle. So we have the first one to be TAB, TAC, TAD, and then the 600 Newton force. Now to solve this question, the first thing we are going to do is to produce a free body diagram for this question. So for the free body diagram, we have the particle in the middle at A, and then we have the forces TAB, TAC, TAD, and then the 600 Newton force acting on this particle at A. And then for the axis, we have this to be the y axis. the x-axis and then the z-axis and then we have the angle between the positive y-axis and TAB to be 30 degrees and then to move from point A to D we are going to move some distance along the x, y and z-axis so it means that for TAD, we are going to represent the force in the Cartesian vector form. Now let's apply the equations of equilibrium to solve this question. So starting from the sum of forces along the x-axis, we say it's equal to zero. So we are going to focus on the x component of each of the forces we have in this question. So let's start off with TAB. So for TAB, it lies in the XY plane and we have the angle formed between TAB and then the positive Y axis to be 30 degrees. Now this happens to be the X component and then this is the Y component. So to find the X component, because this angle is directly opposite to this line which is fx it means that we are going to multiply sine 30 by the resultant force so this component is going to be tab sine 30 and then the y component is going to be tab cos 30 So let's fix the x component force here. So it's going to be TAB sine 30 plus. Now notice that this lie on the positive x axis. So it remains positive. Now let's move on to TAC. Now TAC also lies on the x axis. However, it lies along the negative x-axis that is behind the particle and so it becomes negative so we have negative TAC now let's move on to TAD now for TAD to move from A to D it means that you need to move some distance along the x-axis some distance along the y-axis and then some distance along the z-axis now since we are giving the distances along the coordinate axis, what we are going to do is to represent the vector or the force TAD in the Cartesian vector form. Now to represent this force in the Cartesian vector form, we know it is given by the magnitude of the force times the unit vector in the direction of the force. So the unit vector in the direction of the force. Now if the unit vector in the direction of the force is giving us 
rad then that is equal to now on the x axis you move one unit or better still one meter so one times i is i so the unit vector along x or along the x axis is i unit vector along the y axis is g and the unit vector along the z axis is k so we are going to have one on the x axis times i and that is still i and then along the y axis we are going to move two units now this time we are going to have negative two because this is the positive y axis however we are moving along this line which is the negative y axis and so we are going to have negative 2j and then we also move two units up along the z axis which is positive and so plus 2k and then we divide this by the square root of the coefficient of i j k so that becomes square root of one square plus negative two square plus two square so this becomes i minus 2j plus 2k divided by the square root of 1 square is 1 negative 2 square is 4 positive 2 square is also 4 so this becomes 1 plus 4 plus 4 is 9 and the square root of 9 is 3 so we have i over 3 minus 2j over 3 plus 2k over 3 so this is the unit vector in the direction of the force now we are going to multiply the magnitude of the force by this unit vector and so we are going to have TAD to be equal to the magnitude of TAD times I over 3 minus 2J over 3 plus 2K over 3. So this happens to be the X component, the Y component and the Z component. So since we are interested in the X component, we are going to have 1 over 3 times TAD. So it is positive and so we have plus 1 over 3 times TAD. Now to this 600 newtons force, it is directed along the Z axis and so it has no X component, neither does it have a Y component. And so we leave that and then we say that this is equal to zero. And so we transpose this, which is a negative to the right hand side so that we have t a c equals now sine 30 is half so we are going to have half t a b plus 1 over 3 t a d let's call this equation 1 so let's move on to summation of f y equals 0 so focusing on the y component for t a b we have the y component to be t a b cos 30 so t a b cos 30 and notice that it lies on a positive y axis and so it remains positive and then we move on to t a c t a c lies only on the x axis so it has no y component we move on to TAD and then TAD we have the y component to be negative 2 over 3 times TAD so negative 2 over 3 times TAD and then this also lies on the z axis so it has no y component and so we equate this to 0 now cos 30 is 0. Point 8660 and then we transpose this to the right hand side so that it becomes positive 2 over 3 times T A D let's call this equation 2 lastly we have 
sum of AFZ equals zero. And then we also focus on the Z components. So since TAB lies on the XY plane, it has no Z component. TAC has no Z component. TAD has a Z component. And that is two over three times TAD. And then we have this 600 Newton's force. Now this is directed along the negative Z axis. And so it becomes minus 600 equals zero. Now we call this equation three. Now from equation three, we can transpose 600 to the right hand side and then we find the value of TAD. So from equation three, we have TAD equals, so we transpose this to the right hand side, we have 600 and then we want to divide by 2 over 3. Now in dividing over 2 over 3, we are going to multiply 600 by the reciprocal of 2 over 3, which is 3 over 2. So 2 goes here once, 2 goes here 3 times, and then we have 2 zeros. So 300 times 3 is 900. Therefore, we have TAD to be 900. Now, moving on to equation 2. Okay, from equation 2, we can substitute the value of TAD in here to find the value of TAB. So, from equation 2, we have TAB to be equal to 2 over 3 times 900 divided by 0 0.8660 so 3 goes here once 3 goes here 300 times 2 times 300 which is 600 divided by 0 0.8660 now when you do that we are going to obtain 600 and 92.84 newtons. So this is the value of TAB. Now let's move on to equation one. So for equation one, we have TAC equals half times TAB. So half times 692.84 plus one over three times TAD, which is 900. Now, when you also compute half times 692.84, you have 346.42 plus one over three times 900 is 300. When you add the two, you are going to obtain 646.42 newtons. So this is the value of TAC. So now let's move on to question 3. 